Greetings everyone! Today we're starring a new Sonic Universe arc, The Tails Adventure. Not only does this story star Sonic's best buddy and sidekick, it's an adaption of a game that, at the time of the comic's release, was 15 years old. Tails Adventure, or Tails Adventures, was a Game Gear game that had our two-tailed fox going up against a bird army known as the Battle Cuckoo Empire, a force that invaded Koka Island, where Tails has set up shop. In my opinion, the game itself is underrated, but we're not talking about the game game, we're seeing how it's adapted into the Archie Sonic continuity. Let's not waste any more time. The story begins with Tails taking Antoine and Bunny to their long-awaited honeymoon on Coca Island. A reminder, their marriage happened back in Sonic 174. Now, delayed honeymoons have been known to happen, but I doubt many couples had to go through things like having their home destroyed, fighting evil doppelgangers, and dealing with a technology-controlling witch. Speaking of the last one, this takes place not too long after the Iron Dominion saga, so I don't blame these three for taking advantage of this lull period to visit an island only Tails knows about, or so it seems. As they approach, Tails notices there are three small islands surrounding the big one. However, as Tails points out, he mapped out two since he was here last time. Tails isn't bothered by it, but he should be, for this third island is actually a hidden base. Inside are two bird soldiers monitoring the trio's arrival. They discuss how to deal with them until a third, green bird, orders them to continue observing them. On the beach, Tails heads to his workshop, while Bunny and Antoine head towards a nice camping spot. Tails is worried the two will get bored. Oh, Tails, you know nothing about honeymoons. These two will be busy playing lots of tic-tac-toe on the sand. Knowing Antoine, he'll probably quit after one round. On a serious note, we learn how Tails found Coca Island in the first place. He stumbled across it on his way home from the events of his original miniseries. And he spent a lot of time there during the years Sonic was presumed dead, when really he was in space, as a coping mechanism. The sight of Tails flying throws the bird trio for a loop. While these two wonder how it's possible, the green bird takes offense that a non-bird is flying in the first place. We then get a montage of Bunny and Antoine relaxing and setting up camp, while Tails is chilling in his workshop and finishing a pet project. Don't look at me, Tails said it earlier. That night, Antoine wonders if they've rushed things getting married young. Bunny says they both had to grow up while fighting to save the world, and both are content with one another. Unfortunately, their romantic evening is about to get interrupted. The birds start their attack by burning the jungle, waking up Tails in the process. Bunny and Antoine's escape options are limited. The smoke's too thick to see, so flying's out. Bunny's leg extensions can only extend so far, eliminating walking through the sea, and they're surrounded. Well, it's time to show these birds why these two are freedom fighters. Antoine surprisingly holds his own despite not having a sword on hand. Their luck runs out when this large mech, known by the birds as Big M, takes them out and they're carried away as prisoners. Back over to Tails, he and his new robotic dog T-Pup fly away, only for the birds to cut them off. As he dodges their fire, he thinks back to previous times he's been on outings, that sometimes he needed help, and how he wanted to be accepted as more than just a kid. Well, that was then, and this is now. He too handles the birds until the green one speeds past him, only to come around and hit him multiple times. Tails tries fighting back, but the green bird outmaneuvers him, and soon, Tails hits the ground hard. The issue ends with the bird in introducing himself as Speedy, the 16th Battle Cuckoo of the Battlebird Armada, and Tails' end. We have the comic debut of the Battle Cuckoo Empire, or the Battlebird Armada as they're called here. Was the latter name established before the comics? I thought I've heard that name sometime in the past. I tried looking it up, but the name Battlebird Armada is linked to the Archie Sonic comics. Any help in that regard would be appreciated. The Armada was actually hinted at early on. Remember Sonic issue 173, where a bunch of criminals were captured going after what they thought was the Master Emerald? Bean said he got his and bought Mark's extreme gear as perks from deserting the Armada, implying that he was once a member of the organization. Given that he's a bird and has explosives, I can see it. In fact, according to the trade of this story arc, Bean and Speedy were originally meant to be cousins, and they would have this rivalry that started with their fathers. But the idea got scrapped. 
However, the concept would influence the design of Speedy, as I'll get into in a moment. While members of the Armada act goofy at times, they get down to business, managing to capture Bunny and Antoine with help from Big M, or Mecha Gollum as it's known in the game, and also grounding Tails, for the moment. Unless he didn't get the hint earlier, the birds have a massive superiority complex when it comes to enjoying the skies, as they put it, calling Tails a freak on two separate occasions because he's not a bird. Let's briefly talk about the green bird that really believes in this philosophy. Speedy's design is simplistic compared to his game art. Originally, he had a white body with the green coming from a shirt and pointed green helmet. And he flies using a jetpack. This version is all green, save for his clothes. Tying back to the earlier comment about Speedy being Bean's cousin, instead of a jetpack, his method of flight is this. A flight harness that's supposed to resemble the bottom half of an egg, though at times, it reminds me more of a diaper. Let's move on to another game item that was altered for this comic. Tails' new robotic companion, Teepa. It's based on the remote robot, a device that provides reconnaissance, gathers items, and transforms into the Sea Fox for water missions. We don't know at this point what Teepa is capable of, but I doubt it can change into the Sea Fox, since it was used to get our heroes to the island. I do appreciate the story allowing our heroes to relax and reflect before things got serious. And in Tails' case, referencing past continuity. I'm giving part 1 a 9. It's a great start that introduces a new comical but menacing force and shows our heroes trying their hardest to combat it. And it shows how much Tails has grown throughout the comic's history. When we take a look at the next part, we'll learn a bit more about this new enemy. Until then, have a good day and be safe. Seriously, I'm not the only one that sees this as a diaper, right?